Hello, everybody, and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Jennifer Bergen, and I am so glad that you are joining us today. This month in the United States, we are celebrating Native American Heritage Month. By honoring the legacy, the contributions, cultures, and stories of Native Americans, we see a more complete narrative of the United States. We hope all of our viewers will take some time to learn about the indigenous history and the impact of Native persons where you live. At National Geographic, we use the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to illuminate and protect the wonder of our world. Explore a Classroom connects students worldwide with our National Geographic Explorers for a short lesson and time for your questions. Have you heard that it's Geography Awareness Week? Geography impacts how we live, what we eat, the way we travel, and how we experience the world around us. That's why today's explorer is very special, and she will be giving us a glimpse into how plants impact our geography. Today, our explorer is Dr. Maria Fadiman. Maria is an ethnobotanist. That's a big word that means she explores the relationships between people and plants. Now, Maria has traveled all over the world and she's watched how people and plants coexist. And then she shares these experiences that she's had with people of all ages, like talking live on a stage, being on today's show, or teaching at Florida Atlantic University to future ethnobotanists and geographers. Today, in honor of Geography Awareness Week, Maria plans to share how plants and you are impacted by our geography. But before we get into today's lesson, let's give a little shout out to all of our friends who have registered. We'd like to say hello to Seneca Hill Public Schools, the school at North Decatur, Nashwaxis Memorial, Reeves Elementary, Ashlawn Elementary, Village School, and of course, all of our homeschooler friends out there. We're thrilled to have you here. And with that, let's get our show started. It is time to hand it over to Maria who will tell us all about people, plants, and even you. Take it away, Maria. All right, well, let me share my screen. I am super excited to be here with you today. Okay, perfect. All right, you guys. Okay, well, I am so excited. Thank you all for, for being here. So we have talk today about people, plants and you. And this is what Jennifer was saying, this is Geography Awareness Week. So when people think of geography, sometimes we think of places, okay? But what really is, is the connection between land and people. And this can be in all kinds of ways. So this is a way of looking at the world that can actually give it even more meaning. So, I work with geography through ethnobotany. And again, ethnobotany, what kind of big word is that? Well, the picture of this guy who was out in Tibet eating a root vegetable is an example of ethnobotany. Okay, so what is ethnobotany? The relationship between people. So here we've got two little kids sleeping. And what are they sleeping in? A wheelbarrow. This is out in the Amazon in Ecuador. So the relationship between people and plants. And when we look at a big tree like this, this is out in the rainforest. And when we connect with plants, we want to protect that tree for that tree, but also to protect the animals that live in that tree. So what this is, this is a kawadi. And this was a little baby kawadi that we found abandoned in the rainforest. And this little kawadi would sleep with me. And we called her Panchita. And then she would ride on my head when I would go into the forest. But then when she got old enough to take care of herself, we put her back into the wild. Because all wild animals should stay wild. So when we talk about plants and how you use them, people just make stuff up. So, I work out in the rainforest in Ecuador. 
work with a family and often after working with them, they would give me a present, maybe a banana, egg. One time they said, we have a super special present for you. I was like, what would be a super special present? And they came out with a duck. I was like, what? And there's the duck. He said, wow, you know, thank you so much. But what was I going to do with the duck? But the biggest thing is I had to get it back to where I was working at the biological station. And that was an eight hour walk through the mud. And this duck, and I had no idea how I was going to make it. So I said goodbye, held the duck, turned the corner. Don Felipe, who was taking me there, he said, I know how I'll get it back. And he took a leaf and a vine, wrapped up that duck, and he hooked it on the back of his backpack. And I walked behind him. So for eight hours, I was face to face with the duck. I'm walking and there's the duck. But that is an example of ethnobotany. So if we look here, that is the duck that is all wrapped up in the leaves and the vines wrapped up in the plant. And also kids can be teachers with this. So I was out um, in a different village in Ecuador and there are no cars. So I was waiting to get my burrow. That was how I was going to get back into the town. And I was with Marta, the girl that you see here. And I was late. So I'm rushing and I'm trying to make Marta rush. And Marta is not rushing and I'm irritated. And then I turn around and she's literally stopping to smell the flowers. So I realized she was teaching me how to notice. So we can all teach each other how to see things somebody else might not see. So what are some other plant uses? This is where we are using a plant to paint our faces out of the jungle. Here I am in Africa. You can make a bow and arrow out of plants. And this is the best. You can swing up. The vine is a plant and swinging is an activity. So that is a use. And also a lot of the medicines that we have come from plants. So an example is aspirin. Aspirin originally came from a plant. And then some plants have many uses. So this is a baobab. This is in Africa, this big tree and bees make honey at the top of this tree. So the tree is housing honey and honey is useful to us. But how would you get the honey? Well, you've got these honey spikes and they go up the tree. And so you would climb the tree. So who's climbing this tree? This is a Hadza boy who lives out in Tanzania. Don't any of you guys like to climb trees? Yeah, I do. So this is another big baobab and I am in that tree. Can you see where I am? Yeah, yeah. This baobab also makes a fruit, it makes a delicious drink. So this little boy is looking at the delicious drink being made. You just want to lick every last little bit. And we talk about places that are far away, like Tibet. They have plants that are similar to what we have where I live and probably where many of you live. So for example, the dandelion. What do we do with a dandelion? Well, once it dries, we pick it, we make a wish, and then we blow the dandelion. Well, that's exactly what they do in Tibet. So we have things in common of how we use plants across the globe. And then food. This is one that originally comes from the part of the world where Mexico is, and it's corn. Most of us have had corn, corn on the cob, popcorn, whatever it is. And I was living with a family in Mexico and the grandmother would take the corn cobs and she'd rub them together and the kernels would fall onto a blanket. And these were to be ground up to make tortillas. But if you look, somebody is hiding behind a corn bag. So as soon as the grandmother walks out of the room, corn jumping. That's kind of maybe a new plant used for corn. But what about this? Let's talk about some plants that we use every day. Who likes chocolate? Me, me, me. So chocolate comes from the seed of a plant. 
And it comes from a cacao plant and it's got a big, long scientific name. A lot of plants do. That's actually in Latin, but we just call it the chocolate tree. And there's something called cauliflora's way of growing. And it's this huge fruit is growing right out of the trunk of a tree. And you're like, okay, but then you think, wait a minute, like apples, they grow in the branches. So this is a very special way the chocolate tree grows. And this is the chocolate fruit out in the jungle. And one of the young boys took the fruit, he smashed it against the tree, click, and he opened it up and all that white gooey stuff. That is the fruit part that we were eating. And then the seeds, we actually spit those out all across the forest floor. The only reason I'd ever spit out chocolate is because you have to process it to make it sweet and delicious the way we like to eat it. What? I'm kitchen dancing. And I saw some people dancing before we got started. Who likes to dance? And I'm doing a plant dance. I can do a plant dance here too. Rat a tat tat tat. Holding. That is a spoon. What does that have to do with a plant? Well, what plant would a wooden spoon have to do with? Wood. Where do we get wood from? A tree. So we have plant items all around us. Um, so you guys, you're all ethnobotanists, you're geographers, you'll see, it doesn't take anything to be one. Look around. What useful plants do you see? Um, you know, you're in your classrooms or you're at home. So if you look to your right, you look to your left, you look up, you look down. You know, what do you see? Maybe you see a table. What's it made out of? Maybe you see a house plant. Or maybe you guys look out the windows. If you have windows in your classroom or in your, what do you see? Maybe there's some trees. Or maybe you've got a cup shaker. It comes from a plant. So one of the things that you can do, is you can look for plants for you. It can be inside, outside, wherever. Think of a use of that plant. And again, a use, you can climb it, you can sit on it, it can be pretty, you can eat it, whatever. And if you draw that plant, you put those pages together, you can make your own plant book. So when we talk about geography, and I'm looking at it through plants, we look at the uses. When we connect with plants, this makes us want to take care of them. So we can talk about kids across the globe, the Philippines, Africa, and Bhutan. But let's talk about plants where you live. All right. Thank you. Great to get to talk to you guys. Oh, Maria, I love, love spoon kitchen dancing. It's one of my new favorite activities. Friends, it's almost the moment you've been waiting for. But first, I just want to mention that Maria helped us take an incredible look into her work. And she taught us it is so important to notice the plants where you live. If you're like me and you're interested in joining Maria's mission, will you just raise your hand that you will start paying more attention to plants and plant-made items around your life? You're going to be amazed what you start noticing. Maria, thank you so much for a wonderful presentation today and just for sharing your love of plants and all of the things that you've taught us today. Well, I just want to say it has been so much fun and you guys have wonderful questions and it's really fun for me to get to share what I love with all of you out there being so responsive and vibrant. So this is, you guys have all been great. We'd also like to thank all of our students and teachers you have so many tasks to do now to notice plants, consider making a book with your own sketches, try vegetables. Oh my gosh, so much for you to do. And I hope that you think of plants in a new way from now on and that you'll consider yourself an ethnobotanist. You know, if you've enjoyed today's episode, you might wanna consider joining next week's as well. Our next event for ages four through eight will be November 28th. So sorry, not next week, the week after. We're going to invite explorer Nora Shaki, who is an Egyptian archeologist who will help us learn about the importance of understanding the past. And you will not wanna miss this episode. So you can go ahead and register for this event and more at natgeoed.org backslash explorer classroom. 
you can request a chance to be featured on screen like today's classrooms. And educators, you can also check out an interactive guide that matches every single episode that we host. We would love for you to share the Explorer Mindset and Action Guide with your students and to use the teacher edition that's linked on our registration page. So everyone, go appreciate plants. Think about your geography. Have a great day. Stay curious and keep exploring.